Hello critters, welcome to today's 3D print. Let me give you a little update what's going on. So call this a little homestead update. Um, as you know, my brother came out from Pennsylvania. I flew him out here. Airfare was very cheap. And um, we're trying to get stuff done here in the house. He's also trying to visit too. Um, his health is not the greatest. He has um, some issues with his lungs. And the combination of an infection in his mouth, his lackluster health, and the high altitude is not a good combo. And he's also very intolerant of the cold. And of course, the one week in November that's going to be cold was this week. <laughs> We're burning five kilowatts continuously warming this house because I don't have the money for kerosene and... Um, I have to run electric heaters until we get the pellet stove going. Although, of course, you know, starting tomorrow, it's going to be 65 plus. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, weather. <laughs> but, um, we're trying to get a minimum amount of stuff done so I can make it through winter without things being destroyed. So let me start off by showing you what we are working on and got done. So we're working on the pellet stove. We got the hole in the wall. Uh, first thing it cost me another hundred and seventy two dollars Because as soon as I opened up the box with the pipes in it For the exhaust the very first page said um, by the way if you live above three thousand feet you need the four inch kit <sighs> And of course this freaking elbow That freaking elbow right there is seventy dollars And that didn't come with the kit because we're putting the stove in the corner here So I need a 45 to get it to go out the the house um, thankfully tractor supply was very 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 nice and understanding and allowed me to return the three inch kit that I bought almost a year ago uh, for store credit to buy the four inch kit but that kit was $91 more than the three inch kit <laughs> yay um, then the hole saw didn't help with that because the hole needs to be as big as that so the hole saw in the middle draw a line on the outside jigsaw we actually use the sawzall right there to cut it and we're getting that installed he cut a wire in there so we had to fix that we, I know I reminded him we checked for a wire but the wire was on the other side of the installation against the outside wall we didn't notice it so we ended up cutting that really weird wiring thing um, that outlet and the microwave outlet are its own circuit breaker this outlet onward plus all the ceiling lights is a circuit breaker and then the kitchen has two outlets that are its own circuit breaker that outlet there and the refrigerator the weird thing is the wire we cut goes to that light up there why i mean well i guess if this is the start of the circuit i guess that actually makes sense now that i think about it because this circuit also does all the ceiling lights so the fan that light and that light over there and those two lights so I guess it makes sense that if this is the start of the circuit you'd have to run the wire back to get it up to those lights okay that actually okay that's starting to make sense now so now I have a pretty good idea what that means um, so hopefully today we'll get this finished because I really need a primary heat source that doesn't cost me you know four or five hundred dollars a month because <laughs> that thing draws almost solid 10 amps continuously as a heater you can see it's running this 1600 watt inverter or ups at full power um that's three to four it's running between 75 and 100 percent and um got to replace the fans and that that's really annoying so that's the heater good news is we fixed the electrical so you know how my sister's half of the house was basically out well this was the culprit right there this outlet is broken which had released two of the wires and that is why the power wasn't working um, somehow I never saw this outlet apparently this piece was still there it was just cracked so I may have just not noticed it you know as they painted over these outlets yeah idiots so they probably painted over it while it was cracked you see some of the cracks are filled in so they painted over a cracked outlet <laughs> but that was it we replaced that outlet and now we're good 
So we have electric on Michelle's half. That's all the outlets in the house work now. Most of the circuits are actually pretty logical except for a couple. So this circuit's really annoying because it's that outlet, that outlet, that outlet, that outlet, that outlet, the outlet in the third bedroom, the three outlets in Michelle's bedroom, Michelle's bathroom, and the outside outlet all on one freaking 20 amp breaker. What the hell? Why would they run so much on one breaker? That just makes no sense. But it is what it is. Um, maybe in next summer, next spring, maybe I can afford to have someone help me um, split the circuit. So um, leave this wall back here and the third bedroom on one circuit and then at Michelle's room, break the circuit and put in a new run to a breaker so that her room and the bathroom are on one breaker and then also break the circuit to the outside outlet and run a, a, a trunk line to the outside outlet so that it also is on its own breaker and then maybe put an outside outlet in the back of the house and have them both be on the same breaker this way the two outside outlets will be on one breaker but that's you know you're talking 300 bucks in wiring plus paying someone to help me do it because i can't crawl underneath the house so that's that's a future project um, so we're hopefully going to get the heater going today. Uh, it looks like we have everything we need. I got the 500 degree silicone, all that crap. So and we're just about done. So I finished making the hole and then install this stuff. And that should be it. Got to run it on high for 30 minutes to bake the paint. And then after that, you should be good to go. Although now after tonight, I won't need this <laughs> for another week or two. <laughs> we shouldn't really need this until mid-December. And we'll go from there, but I'm super stoked that he was able to fix the electrical. So we now have power on Michelle's into the house. Next up, the shed. So we got the last piece of wall put up. This wall still needs to be cut down and secured. That wall still needs to be cut down. This wall is cut. I just got to cut the 4x4s. As you can see, we have to lower the wall by this much. We had to lower that entire wall so we could put the 2 by 6 so the problem is you need enough space for the 2x6, the OSB, and the metal roof to all fit under that E, that drip edge, to avoid the water dripping between the two. Now this here is all code. So these beams here form the little airlock between the house and the shed. And these beams are bolted to the house, but nothing is attached to this. So as you can see, the shed is not attached to those beams. I'm just gonna put weather stripping in here to seal that link. Because if I put one screw from this to this, it's an attachment. It's an addition to the house and can't do that without a permit. And I don't wanna break the rules. I had to completely modify this whole thing. So these four by fours are part of this platform. This platform is 200 square feet. The platform is less than 30 inches. Therefore code says I don't need a permit for this. If I made this three inches taller, or if I made this platform half a foot bigger, it would require a permit, okay? So it's like a deck, patio. Now, these are two separate structures. So this is a 10 by 10, and this is a 10 by 10, and I have to keep them separate. If I link them, it becomes a 10 by 20, and I'm not allowed to do that because that requires a permit. I'm only allowed 120 square feet without a permit. And you see, I still need to cut down that wall way too tall i'm not worried about the height as you can see i am almost exactly as tall as this but because there's going to be you know stuff here i'll never reach that so i'm not worried about hitting the ceiling i'll have to expanding foam this and um we also had to shorten the door so we had to drop this down one full two by four width in order to have enough clearance for this to pass if we kept this up high, we would have had to cut this like this, and that would not have worked very well. On top of that, they screwed up this entrance when they made it. They were supposed to make this entrance for that door, and the problem is they made it exactly the width of that door, and also not tall enough. <laughs> so we're gonna have to hope it fits in here. We might have to beat the door in here, but we're also gonna have to cut like five inches off the bottom of that door um, in order to fit it in here. So we have, we should have enough width, but we had to lower the height even more. They were already not tall enough and we had to lower it even more in order to fit the roof. But that won't be a problem. I can already tell that his wall's built better. <laughs> 
So I'll give him credit. He did a good job. And the piece we cut out of the bottom, we put up here. And then I'll just put a piece of, you know, plywood and insulation in here to seal that up. And because uh, we're running out of OSB, we probably have enough to fill that in um, with scrap pieces like that right there. So today's objective, and well, as you can kind of guess by now, there's no stream. <laughs> today's objective is to mark and cut down this wall, same height as that wall, and then to cut down and also make that wall straight like we did there. So as you can see, it's all straight now instead of having that curve. So we have to do all that and finish cutting this down. This will stay this tall, as tall as these beams, because remember, there's no crossover here. We can't attach this to this. We still have to put a support across here for both of them so that they don't try to fold inward. And because there's nothing, because we can't attach them, they're not allowed to be attached. If they become attached, they become one unit and then they require a permit. As long as I keep them as two separate 10x10s, 10 no permit needed. That also means that I can't connect the roof. So the sheeting for this roof will start here and go that way. And the sheeting for this roof will start here and go that way. And the metal will do the same thing. And then what I'll do is I'll have one piece of metal that'll overlap the two metal roofs. It will screw to one, but not the other. So that it'll cover that gap between the two roofs without actually um, being part of the other roof because it won't be screwed into it. Because again, I suspect if I were to screw it into both halves, that would make it one. And I'm not allowed to do that. And we're allowed 120 square feet, so that little bit of extra won't be a problem because we're allowed up to 10 by 12. We also have to build an eave for this. So we have to build out this roof, another piece of two by six out here like this, foot and a half. And um, you can't go two feet because that would be the full 10 by 12. I'm not sure if the 10 by 12 is total, um, uh, what would we call base drag or frontal area, or would it be just the footprint? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna risk violating the rules since we're gonna have a six inch piece of roof overlapping the other one. I can only go a foot and a half here and still stay within 10 by 12. So we're gonna build an eave to come out um, 18 inches so that um, the rain won't be able to get into this gap here because we don't want the water coming down here. This roof was supposed to originally be taller than this roof, but the, you know it was supposed to be as tall as the container and they screwed that up. And that's it. We will go from there and lifeofnerese.com will have more updates on this as we go. But if I can get this dried in, I can at least, you know, not have this destroy itself when snow comes. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Just because he's in pretty bad shape health-wise, you know. With the high altitude and the lung problems, he, he only worked for about, you know, 40 minutes to an hour before he's just petered out. And he's got to stop. And um, I don't want him falling off the roof, you know. He's not just here to be, you know, a worker slave. He's also my brother. <laughs> He's supposed to enjoy himself a little bit too, you know, and help me out in the process. So, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get it done. We're going to try. We shall see.